The situation in Ethiopia has gone well beyond the stage at which words like tragedy and disaster have any meaning. It's a situation that's out of the control of the government here or of the international voluntary agencies. It'll be nearly a year before Ethiopians can expect proper rains again. By that time, thousands of people, perhaps even millions of people, may have died. On the 23rd of October 1984, BBC reporter Michael Burke sent back a news report from Ethiopia that shook the world because of its harrowing account of a famine, the like of which had never been pictured before. The scenes were almost biblical in their intensity, the suffering almost unbearable. As one relief worker put it, the closest thing to hell on earth. It was the first time that the full horror of what was happening in Ethiopia had reached beyond the frontiers of this battle-scarred, beleaguered country, and it touched the conscience of the world. How Ethiopia had got into this state was a sad story of complex political faction fighting compounded by several years of failed harvests caused by exceptionally dry weather. For months, relief workers had been denied access to the worst affected areas by warring bands of tribesmen who preyed on food convoys and prevented any other kind of aid reaching the remoter areas. When rumors of food arriving did get around, there was mass panic. Even though a rough and ready organization was introduced to distribute such aid as there was, it was reckoned that nearly a million people were dead or dying, and another six million were seriously under threat. The BBC's reports from Ethiopia sparked off a huge response from the public in Europe and America. They were followed by rallies, concerts and fundraising on a massive scale. But as the 80s turned into the 90s, the famine in the sub-Saharan desert communities showed little signs of lessening charity simply wasn't enough. 